Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Just look at these beauties. Every time I show this journal here in my videos, I always get requests for a tutorial. So finally, here it is. As usual, I have my step-by-step -step guide over here that's going to help you first visually seeing the video and how it's made and also having some notes. There are so many different variations and so many different things that you can do with this type of bookmaking and bookbinding. We're going to discuss all of those today. I really hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learn lots of new things and I hope you have fun. Let's get started. You will see a flip through of all of these journals throughout the video, but just in case if you are interested to have a little peek here at the beginning, this one here is made with greeting cards. And then the, these ones here are made a little bit differently. I didn't use greeting cards. I just used different types of things. This is the one that we do from scratch on video. So many fun things in here. So many things to add. So many things to do. I don't know. Maybe this is my favorite spread. In any case, lots of fun stuff. All right, let's begin. So the very first thing you need is a cereal box or any type of box and you can see straight away how wide your spine is going to be. So I have chosen to use this box, this was from some lasagna sheets, because I wanted a, a slightly narrower spine than the ones that I've made before. So then you want to just trim down your box, which I've already done with this one, to the size that you need or that you want. So I can already tell this is how large my journal is going to be, how wide and how tall and that's the spine right so you take your box and you trim everything off and you're keeping the spine just the one side and you're cutting everything else off so after you've done that you've trimmed your box down and everything we are going to create the half spine now basically all we're doing is cutting a section off the top and the bottom so you want to mark where you're going to cut i've already made some little marks here and you can see here I went about two inches from the top and then two inches from the bottom and that way you know my spine is going to be centered and I've marked myself where I'm going to cut. I'm just going to go in with my scissors and make that cut. Okay that's one side done. I'm not cutting that off. I'm going to keep that. And now the last one, you can see I'm just going up to that point that I've marked right there. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to fold it down. I might use my ruler just to make sure that I have a nice straight edge. Maybe use some type of a tool. I'm using a bone folder here. I just want to have a nice crisp fold. Perfect. And here we go. So I'm going to keep these flaps because they provide extra reinforcement for my spine. We don't want a flimsy spine and they kind of overlap a little bit. So I'm just going to trim it down just a tiny little bit so that I don't have that bulge. Here we go, just like that. And now what I'm going to do, I can see here one is going over my fold. So I'm just going to trim the sides a little bit too because I want to be able to close my journal without any resistance here. So I'm just going to trim a tiny little bit over here. Here we go. I think that's looking good. There's no resistance to closing my journal. That's how the spine is going to look. I'm actually going to put another little strip of cardboard here to make that spine even more strong. So I'm just using a, another cereal box. Okay, so I just want it to be a little bit narrower than my spine and and I want to be able to put these flaps down perfectly and this gives me a really thick, really sturdy spine. So I'm just going to glue this in there and now I'm going to glue the flaps down. I'm just checking that everything is opening closely, closing fine. This still obviously needs to be glued down. The glue needs to dry. All right, so that's my spine done. Now we are up to step number three, which is reinforce side panels to make cover sturdier. This is the cover and it's not very sturdy. You don't have to do this, but I like to just to make everything nice and strong and hard cover. So what I've done is I've cut down more cardstock from cereal boxes and I'm simply going to uh, glue it down onto the side panels like this. They can be exact same size or slightly smaller, which is kind of what I did. At tiny little bit smaller than my side panels and I am just going to glue it right down on top of here. 
apply a little bit of glue i'm not being too pedantic you can see i'm not really covering everything because everything is going to be covered with other materials so i don't have to worry about things coming undone and just glue that down okay so so far we have the cover it's nice and sturdy the panels are sturdy the spine is sturdy the spine has to be sturdy because of the type of binding we're going to do and now we have to make a pretty so the next step is covering the box and at this point you can use a few different things you can use fabric you can use scrapbook paper wrapping paper now on this journal which i always get asked about you can see that spine you know what i did here i covered it with faux handmade paper which is this here i have a tutorial on faux handmade paper and basically instead of making the paper on sheets of tea dyed paper i went directly onto my cover i'm going to leave this link down below if you wanted to see the method of making these that's actually how i did this cover i did it directly onto the cereal box rather than doing it on paper first and I covered the whole thing. So I did the outside first, let it dry, then I did the inside. You can see this beautiful texture and pattern and threads and tea leaves and all sorts of things in there. But what I'm going to do for this video is what I did on this cover here. And basically how I did this is I took two sheets of paper, just copy paper, and I overlapped them and just glued them in the middle to make one large piece of paper because you need a large piece of paper. You need to be able to cover the whole outside and bring those folds in, right? So just one copy paper definitely wouldn't be enough. And once I just glued those papers down in the middle, hinged them, I went ahead and I ripped up some book pages. It's pretty self-explanatory, you can see. Ripped up book pages and covered the whole thing in book pages. And they're all kind of going, you know, this way and that and straight and all sorts of different ways, right? So I had this obviously ready made for this video and this is what I'm going to use. So now I'm just going to flip it around and put my cover on top just like this. So this piece of paper that I'm using is probably a little bit too large, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply glue onto the outside of my cover. So I'm using my acetone-based glue. This one's not available outside of Australia, but this is kind of like your Fabri-Tac in the US. And basically acetone-based glues don't warp the paper, but it doesn't really matter because you can see this paper is quite warped and it doesn't bother me for this project. And now I'm just going to glue that on there just like this. Really trying to make sure that it's nice and glued. And I just want to see when I fold it, how it's going to look that's pretty good there's a bit of warping here you know that's the look i'm kind of going for so the warped pages they don't bother me at the moment and now you can see for this step we need to cover the outside which is what we did and we have to start folding the material whatever material you're using if it's scrapbook paper or fabric or, or whatever we need to fold it in and cover all of the edges meaning we have to cover all of this too in a standard book, you will just need to, you know, fold it this way, this way and up. This type of book is a little bit different because we have to cover all of the edges. Okay, so I'm going to start with the trickiest part, which is this part here. I'll speed it all up at first and then I'll explain what I'm doing. But I first want to show you visually so you can see what I'm doing. see that so i'm starting here somewhere in the middle and i am cutting all the way to that point here the corner and then doing the same on the other side and you can see i went right into that corner and now i'm going to fold this down and it's going to look like that you might have to trim just a tiny little bit there and this again adds even more reinforcement to the spine so remember that spine has to be really strong and i'm simply going to glue these flaps down before i continue all right so that's all down and now i'm going to do these sides so these are the trickiest parts and then it's really easy after this i'm going to use my ruler to help me out a bit here i'm only working with a tiny little strip of paper here so it's a little bit tricky and i just need to kind of we want to wrap that edge right just like this 
I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see. Basically, we just want to wrap that edge, just like that. And now, of course, that's lifting. It doesn't want to stay down. So before I continue on the other three, I'm going to apply a little bit of a glue here. And I'm going to clip that down, maybe hold it down with something, uh, bulldog clips or whatever you have in hand. There we go. I'm just going to leave that on for now and do the other three sides the same way. So as you're working, you can see here, it's not going to look perfect at this stage, but don't worry, that's all of that is going to be sorted out. And when you're applying your glue, try and go all the way into that point there. Okay, so I hope you can see what I've done there. Now I'm going to come back to this first one that I did because it had a little bit of time to dry. And now I'm going to start wrapping the sides. So I'm going to cut a slanted part off here. I might do all of the sides at once. And if you notice, I left a little bit of space here because I want to cover those corners as well. And I'm starting on this one here and I'm going to cut a slant there as well, all the way to that corner. So now with these spaces that I left here, I'm going to fold them down over the corner and I'll try not to squish that corner. So I'm just folding over the top. And I might add a tiny little bit of glue there to hold that in place, just like that. And depending on uh, what kind of material you're using, if it's quite thick like this one here, um, again, I'm going to use my ruler to help me out. I just want to have nice, neat folds. And then fold that down. Perfect. And now you can see this little bit here is sticking out. So I'm just going to trim that off, not all the way, just a bit that's kind of visible, just like that. And that's one side. I'm going to glue it straight down. And here we go. So you can see how that's starting to come together at the front cover. So now I'm going to do the opposite side here and then the side here. I'll speed everything up. I forgot to do this corner first, but that's okay. I'll do that now. And now the sides. And that's what this looks like. It doesn't look very neat underneath, but that's fine. I have a little bit of overlapping here. It doesn't really matter, but I feel like I just want to trim it off because I don't want to have bulging bits. So I'm just going to... This is all going to be covered anyway, on the inside, I mean. So I'm just getting rid of those overlapping parts. Here we go. That's what it looks like. This is going to be my front or back. I'm not sure. Probably this is going to be my front cover. All right. And now repeating the process on the other side. All right, here we go. So we have covered the outside and I have folded all of the extra pieces in and they're all lifting because it's quite, you know, this is double paper. This is maybe even three, four layers of paper here because I have copy paper and then I have book pages. So things are wanting to lift. So now naturally what I'm going to do before I proceed is I'm going to leave this to dry under something heavy. I don't want any bits like you can see this here. You can see that that's not good enough. This has to be flat completely before I continue to the next step. So I'm going to leave this under something heavy for a couple of hours or most likely overnight and then I'll be back. But for you, it'll be like right now. But I just want to show you how it's sort of looking close up. So you can see on the inside, it's quite messy and that doesn't bother me at all because this is all going to be covered. The outside I am concerned with and I want it to look, I want those edges, you can see the edges, I want them to be perfect. You can see the corners, the corners are perfectly sealed. And of course you can always use corner protectors if you're having issues with your corners. Okay, here we go, everything is nice and dry and I am ready to proceed to my next step, which is covering the inner spine with a strip of paper or fabric. So I'm going to use this calico or muslin uh, little piece of fabric and I cut it down to the exact same height as my spine. 
and then also left extra over here on the side so that's also going to provide extra reinforcement here on the bend and now i'm just going to glue that down and i'm using this alma's uh, clear glue only because it is very spreadable so it'll be easier for me to apply a really thin layer and to spread it around i want a really quite thin layer so that uh, none of the glue is kind of seeping through the fabric it still might happen and it's okay because most of it will be covered with our signatures but a really nice thin layer will do and now i'm just going to pop this down and also i want to get it into the crease you can see how i've kind of gotten it into the crease over here and now i'm just going to glue this down as well same on the other side and now i just want to open and close a few times just to make sure that i have enough give in the creases here perfect okay and now for our next step is covering the inner side panels which is the front and back cover and i'm using scrapbook paper i have already cut this to size and i have done some sewing around just for decorative purposes so you can see i've cut it down slightly smaller than my cover and now i'm simply going to glue this down and then i'll show you up close and once again i'm going back to my acetone based glue so that i don't have any warping and i am going to apply that all around now making sure i go right to the edge because the edges are quite important so you can see all that glue there the edges are the most important but i've got glue all over and press it down and now i'm going to do the same thing on the other side here we go all right here we go so that's all glued down i just want to show you when i was trimming this paper down to size i just did a little bit less a little bit smaller than the actual cover so that you can still see the edge of the paper here or the edge of the book i guess and in case you're wondering here you can see that the inside of that spine is showing through my fabric first of all i've chosen fabric because there's less chance of fabric ripping with the opening and closing of the book here paper might you know tear over time so that's why i use fabric and this the fact that it's see-through doesn't bother me because i'll have my signatures in here and you won't be able to see that you can see in this one that i've previously made it's showing through a little bit here as well but it's you can't you know it really doesn't matter let's see in between the signatures see here it's showing through but it's fine it's no big deal right okay so now that i've done that i'm gonna lay it under something heavy again i really need this nice and flat and completely stuck down and dry so once again laying it under something heavy but because my next step is uh, making the signatures before i actually lay this under something heavy i need to know the exact height of the spine so this is the way the book sits and so i need to know the exact height of the spine for my signatures and i might just use a folded piece of paper or maybe actually i'll use a little bit of cardstock okay so here we go i have the exact size of my spine so now i can just use this for my next steps and i can go ahead and put this away under something heavy i don't need it for now okay so now for our signatures let's talk about a few different things that you can actually do you can prepare your signatures these are three signatures i've got here and you might want to bind it into your spine the same way that you will bind you know you can use a three hole pamphlet stitch this is actually a four hole a pamphlet stitch here but you can use a three hole pamphlet stitch really quite simple to do and just stitch that part because that's how high your spine is you stitch it into the spine i hope i'm, I'm making sense here but that's not actually what i'm going to do today today i'm going to do this wrap around binding like the one that i've got here and the one that i've got here so you can see i have wrapped around the spine rather than sewn through the spine see this it's not sewn through the spine it's actually wrapped around all right so for the wrap around binding that i'm going to do i have decided to use mostly cardstock you can see this is mostly cardstock but i also do have some scrapbook paper in there and you will see it, it will make sense why i decided to do that and so i didn't go with the traditional tea dyed paper like i've got here in these signatures i am not going to if i was if i wanted to use these signatures i would do binding through the spine i would do a three hole pamphlet stitch but because i want to do wrap around i'm using cardstock mostly 
Another option you can do is what I've done in this journal here. And this is actually a tutorial that I followed from Jenny Belly. And I might link that video in the description box. So basically what this is, this whole journal inside is all greeting cards that I have either covered with some scrapbook paper or painted like you can see here. So it's either covered or painted, you know, I did sort of both. And these are all greeting cards that, you know, I, I have received over the years, uh, Christmas cards and all that sort of stuff. Or my mum has given me some of her cards. You know, we tend to keep these for many years and then one day we declutter and we decide we don't want to keep them anymore. And this is a perfect way, you know, to use up those cards rather than throw them away. So you can see this journal is very colorful, all sorts of, it's more of an art journal. This is something I'm not going to come in and write in, but maybe I would glue stuff in. Maybe I'll do a little bit of writing. You know, I can really uh, get creative with this type of journal. And then I have pockets and all sorts of stuff, right? So that's this one. For our tutorial today, I have decided to do three signatures and I have chosen some cardstock papers. This is also card cardstock that's actually these page dividers that i have folded in half and then trimmed the excess off i've also got some of these guys they are file folders and i've also trimmed down to size and then of course i've got some random scrapbook paper that i'm going to bind in there so not necessarily cardstock and then just some few other bits and pieces so the first thing that i actually did before i cut these down to size is prepare my template if you've seen my videos, you've seen me use a template for all of my journals that I make. So basically, let me just get that cover. Here we go. So I made myself a template that is the size of the pages that can fit the maximum size that can fit in my journal, right? This is the very maximum size. I can't go bigger than this. I can go smaller than this. And then of course I use this template to trim down or in this case I've actually folded some in to create pockets and stuff like that. You can see everything has to fit perfectly within my template. So I was just basically using this when I was trimming down my pages and it was just easier to do it that way when you have a template, right? And because I've got, I'm going to do three signatures, I've chosen three of these, three of these, three of these, and so on. Three of these, three of these, and then six of the scrapbook paper. So I don't want too many pages in one signature because then it's going to be too thick, right? This is just, I don't know, how many is this one, two. So I'll have seven pages in each signature, okay? So I can either go ahead and place this in my signature straight away, or in order to be able to do that wrap around binding, we need to cut slits in each of our pages. And this is how I do it. Let's start with this one. This is where my template comes for the, this is the exact height of my spine. So I'm going to find the middle and I really want to be as exact as possible because it kind of has to be, you know, the middle because then it's going to either stick up out of the book or stick down out of the book. So this is approximate, but this is the best I can do without measuring. I can always go and measure. So I have marked, that's the height of my spine. And now I need, for this step here, I need to nick or cut with my scissors a very, very, very thin sliver of paper. So I'm going to start over here and cut right into that paper up to my mark. Just like that and do the same on the other side. And this is the tedious, boring part of making this book. And basically when you open it up, it looks something like this. So when we're wrapping, when we're binding and we're wrapping that string, that string has somewhere to go, right? And now I have to do this on all of the pages. All right, so here we go. All of my papers have little nicks in them, see, which are exact same height as my spine. And it didn't take very long to do at all, probably took about five minutes, but I went through all of them individually and just cut those little slivers of paper. So now what I'm going to do, because I'm doing three signatures, doesn't matter how many you're doing really, I probably could do more, but I'm only doing three signatures and I'm going to place everything in order that I want it to be. So I'll start off with my first signature and I want my first page to be this one. So seven pages per signature and I want them to go in this order. I want this one first and then the blue and then the scrapbook paper and then maybe this one that opens up another scrapbook paper and then these two 
smaller pieces. And now I'm going to repeat the exact same process, exact same order of pages for my other two signatures. You can do three different signatures. I don't know. I usually like to do same signatures. So that's what I'm going to do. And here we go. So my three signatures are ready to go. Everything fits perfectly in there. Nothing is sticking out. And that's what the spine looks like at the moment. So the next step before binding is doing all of your sewing and inking the pages and all that stuff. I'm going to do all of that off camera, but I just want to show you how, uh, you know, having a little bit of sewing on the pages, like I've done different threads and all sorts of different things. It always adds extra character see here like all of that and all of that needs to be done before you actually bind the book see all that sewing i'll do a more detail flip through a little bit later on i think but i just wanted to show you like all of this needs to be done before you actually bind the book because you can't put this through the sewing machine okay so i'm going to go off camera i'm going to do all of my sewing i'll quickly show you what i've done and then we will proceed to the actual binding okay all of my sewing is done and i'll just quickly show you uh what i've done i've added some pages just sewn around some pages, added little bits and pieces like this, sealed those pockets, added a little bit of extra, you know, bits and pieces here, some ruffles on the side so it looks nice and beautiful, then here you can see just, you know, added a little belly band, did inking and some decorating on the pages some pockets so all of this these will be filled just added little bits and pieces so any sewing that needed to be done i have done that and then here so you will probably see this in more detail when i embellish and before i do the binding i just want to distress this cover just a little bit And there we go it's not really necessary to do that but i just like to add that little bit of a vintage feel and the ink that i used is called brushed corduroy you can't even really see it but anyway all right so that's ready to go now we can do our binding the good thing is that the binding is really easy to do so you just need some type of a twine or a wax thread or you know whatever i'm using this it's not waxed or anything like that it doesn't have to be and i'm going to get my first signature and you can cut the length in advance if you want to, but I'm not actually cutting anything. I'm just leaving it on there on the spool. And now you just wrap. You want that thread to go through all of those slits, just like this. I didn't arrange anything. You can do that, you know, arrange them all nicely. But I'm just going to try and do it this way. And then if it's not really sitting properly, then I can go in and re rearrange it in there. So you can see the threads are coming out to the side, onto the outside of the signature, which is that diagram there. And I'm just going to double check that they're all, you know, aligned with each other. And that's looking pretty good. So that's what the middle signature looks like. I mean, the middle of the, of the signature. And now to bind, we simply must wrap this around the spines. This is the front cover. So I want my first signature to be you know the first signature in there and there we go so i just kind of you know put it in there and now the tricky part is to get this to stay up so i might use this just to help me out maybe place something to hold it in place like that i'm going to trim that off just so things are not in my way i know it's a little bit hard to see but i did leave quite a lot of uh, string here so now there's a few things that you can do here Basically, what we're doing is we're going to tie a knot here, and that's going to be the binding. So at this point, before you tie a knot, you want to add whatever you want to have on the spine. You want to add that at this step before you tie any knots. Otherwise, you don't have to, if you don't want anything on the spine, you can just tie a knot and leave uh, strings like this hanging. I'm going to undo this knot, but I just wanted to demonstrate. When all of your signatures are in, you will have these uh, threads hanging like this. And especially if you're using different color threads, it might look really fun. Or you can go in and add your beads onto those threads so they can be moved up and out of the way. So, you know, you decide how creative you want to get at this point. But what I decided to do is I'm going to add some beads. And I'm going to use these beads. These are my handmade rolled beads. 
and I've made these many years ago and they're looking perfect still and I've sealed them with some sparkly nail polish so you can see they're really beautiful and sparkly there's lots of tutorials on these rolled beads on YouTube I don't have one but there's plenty out there if you want to see how to make them they're really easy to make and I'm also going to use some of these gold beads in between just to make it a little bit more special and I'm going to string these on with the help of my needle so I've checked of course first if my beads will go through you know this needle and they do go through perfectly because the opening is wide enough and then I'm just going to thread these beads and then I'll show you how to finish off so as I'm threading, I'm checking how much space I've got left. I can see I have a little bit of space left here, but not enough to add one of these. So I'm just going to take these off and add more of the gold beads. All right, here we go. I'll show you what I've done. See how I've added those beads and they fit perfectly to the size of my spine or the height of my spine. And now I'm going to place that signature in position where I want it. And it's okay because you can actually move these signatures once they're bound. So it's, it doesn't have to be in perfect position. And then we simply tie a knot up here. And you want to make that knot really, really tight, as tight as you possibly can. And that's why it's important to have a very sturdy, strong and thick spine. And I'm going to double knot and I'm going to triple knot and I just really want to be sure that it's tight and it's not going anywhere. All right, let me show you. See? So now with these strings, you can leave them hanging. I definitely have way too much string here. I was being very generous just to be sure. But you can have these strings. You can leave them on the spine hanging like that. Or what I did is I'm going to flip them back inside. And then I'm going to do something fun with them on the inside of the journal. But for now, I'm just leaving them in there. And I'm going to repeat this whole process with my next two signatures. Here we go, signature number two. I'm going to place it next to my first signature. And you know, you want to make sure that everything is up the right way. Perfect. Start stringing my beads on there. Here we go, done. And now I'm going to tie that knot. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to move that onto the inside and repeat on my third signature. And here we go. That's done. So we have wrapped around the spine. We've added the beads or the buttons. I'll show you this one. I went a little bit overboard with the buttons, but if you wanted to have a closer look, instead of putting the beads on, I've simply put the buttons on. Nothing is glued down. So they're all moving around, but that's what I did. I just added those buttons on and then tied a knot at the top. And the fun thing is that you can do all sorts of things here at the, uh, at the spine. You can do many different things to make it look, you know, each journal can be completely different. It's very important that the knot is as secure as possible. So these signatures on the inside can still move a little bit, but I can feel resistance. You don't want to have it really loose and moving around, you know, you definitely want resistance in there. All right. So now that my journal is bound, and of course, when you bind your journal, you can just move it all into place to how you want it to be. I could have definitely fit another signature in here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to embellish this on the inside, add a few bits and pieces, and I'll show you also what to do with these threads. So because on my list here, our next step is embellishing the front cover, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now. So in this journal, you can see I just added an image you know, and I glued a few different bits of pieces. Uh, I mean, I've sewn a few different bits and pieces and you can't see, but this is actually covered with a mesh, uh, like a tool fabric, just to mute it down a little bit. And I actually have a whole lot of these made up. So I'm just going to use one of these and see which one looks the best. I decided to go with this one because it kind of matches the beads on the side. So basically all this is, is just, this is packaging paper. And then I put music pages here a little bit of some type of a lace and then an image that I got out of a book and I sewed them together. I just want to add a little bit of black, I guess because of all that black stitching inside and just to make it pop up a bit more on that cover. And now all I'm going to do is glue it down. You can do some type of a book plate. You can do really anything that you put onto the front cover. It's going to look good. Maybe some book corners would look quite nice. 
it's not bad i kind of like it with that so i'm just gonna not add the book corners all right and now all that's left to do is take care of these which is what we're going to do next and finish off the inside so i just pulled out a few bits and pieces i'm gonna start embellishing and then i will show you what i've done but let's discuss these what can we do with them i'll show you what i've done in this journal in this middle signature here i've just added some tags and these are clothing tags actually and i just they can you know be taken off and they're kind of like floating tags that you can write on or whatever you know that's just an idea so i've just tied a knot there and that's why i like to leave these strings long so then i can do stuff with them over here i just did little hearts on a string just like that to finish that one off same thing over here I just tied a bow here, nothing special. I added two little mini tags over here. So I didn't want any of these threads to hang longer below here because then things are going to get caught. So for example, those hearts that I did, I made sure that they're shorter because I don't want them sort of getting stuck in here. It's one thing to keep in mind. And this card journal, I mean, I made this so many years ago. I don't even remember. How did I even do this? I have no idea. I used those threads to do something here, make this pocket. Very interesting. What did I even do here? I have no idea. There's nothing happening. Oh, that one I just cut, cut off. Here I've got a tag, just a single tag. This one I also cut off. Another single tag, another single tag. And I actually put these, instead of putting them in the middle of a signature, I actually put them in between the signatures. Here's another pocket that I did here. Interesting, I forgot how I did half of these things. So anyway, that's that one. And look at all these beads, it looks so beautiful. And then for this cover, you can see, I mean the closure, this ribbon, I just put the ribbon underneath the beads and that's my closure for the journal. And it's actually removable, it can come out completely. The possibilities are endless all right i'm gonna finish this journal and then i'll show you what i've done and here we go this is the journal complete that's the spine the back and the front and let's have a look inside so here i've just put a little pocket with this journal belongs to and just added little bits and pieces a cluster here this page opens up and I didn't, you know, go ahead and embellish every page. This is a book page bow paper clip. I have a tutorial link down below. Here we've got some of those tags. Over here, I just put a little snippet with leftover bits and pieces and a journaling spot in that pocket. Here is just a little stamp. I uh, stamped a book page and cut it out. Just to embellish that a little bit. And here is that flip extra pages for writing and stuff. A little mushroom sticker. So all of the pages have a little something happening, but I didn't want to overdo it. Here's a little tag that I have popped into this page and this one opens up. Then over here in this belly band, this is an image from a book or a magazine. I can't remember and I made a journaling spot. And then of course this one opens up. For more journaling space over here i did hearts on a string you can see some of those uh, corners that i've used my punch this one again i just put a little tab here sticker a ribbon ruffle over here just put a tag into this pocket another one of those little snippets and this is an envelope i have something in there and then over here, one of these. I have a tutorial on this. I will link it down below. This actually makes perfect cover pieces. That's what I originally made them for. But so I just have it in there. This one opens up. So I didn't, as you can see, you know, I didn't go overboard with embellishing because this is a journal that's going to be used and written in and all sorts of things added to it. Here are some tags. So these are those inner strings, right? And I've just tied a knot, tied those tags there, and I have them sitting there with this paper clip. This one again opens up, and here I've just got a pocket with a little something in there. And a journaling spot over here. And there we go, it really doesn't take much, you know, to make it special. Journal complete.
three signatures for this size journal is actually perfect so there's still a little bit of space to grow I think if I did four signatures then I wouldn't be able to uh, use as many embellishments as I did and I guess the thickness of the pages that you use also will play a part in that as well so I want to see if I can give you some more ideas on how you can embellish your journal so I'm just going to do a speed it up flip through of this one as well yeah i've got a double pocket happening so i have a little pocket here and a little pocket here and basically all i did is that piece i folded it back in so that's how i created that some book pages on the side some paper ruffles tags pockets a little sticker here that i made pocket belly band you know just makes it look rich when you have all of these layers on one page this is an extra piece of paper that I've sewn directly onto that page and added a little embellishment here. There's just so many things, uh, possibilities are endless. These are three little pockets and I've just put things in there as well. Another pocket and then more pockets here. The more interactive and the more little different things, the more fun the journal is. For the person that purchases it and uses it, you know, flip of different papers here. This is a, an envelope that I sewn on right there in the middle and then embellished here. These are pockets, just fun stuff. And then there's a pocket here at the back as well. Just with one envelope, all of those, you know, different elements added. Here's another pocket. This one's really fun. I really love this one. So this one flips down and then look, I don't know. Is that fun? I really, for some reason, like this page journaling space and then because the sewing was showing on the other side from this piece here that I've sewn directly onto the page I just made it look arty I guess pocket with a little oh, with a little something here I did a lace I sewn this black lace directly onto the page so it's like a lace flip tags this one here opens up more journaling space and then that's a pocket there I mean, you know, we can do so, so many different things. Here's a, a blue doily that can be a tuck spot. One, another one of those snippets. They look so good on pages. And I just stamped directly onto a book page. And the other journal, I cut it out. Journaling spot there. And this little crazy sewing piece. Okay, that's that one. So let me know what you guys think. I really, really love this method. I think it looks so much fun. Look at this. Sitting on a shelf, like perfection, right? I just love this so much. And it's just something a little bit different. And the fun thing is that you can do so many different things with it. It can go so many different ways. I hope you'll give it a go. Let me know if you have any questions, of course, down below. And I'm going to pop up the instructions onto the screen now. Here's the first two, so you can pause the video here to take a photo or to take a screenshot. Or if you are feeling a little bit crazy today, you might want to copy it down. I don't know. And here are the other two. I hope this helps you guys. I hope I've simplified this process. I think sometimes when we see a journal that's looking quite elaborate, it seems really difficult to do. But when you know the basic steps, it's really quite easy. And especially when you embellish it, everything comes to life while you're making it it might seem like oh this is not going anywhere i don't know what i'm going to do next but when it's complete it's it's a beautiful piece of art once again please let me know your thoughts thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye